Hello, dear friends. It's Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. Uh, and today begins a week of prayer and for those who are able fasting. Uh, this comes at the call of our primate, Archbishop Foley Beach, who with a very overwhelmed heart as he views what is happening in the world, but particularly in North America, has called for prayer and fasting, which I hope to do and I invite you to do as well. It's interesting in the purposes of God, this time of isolation, uh, we have walked through Lent. We have uh, rejoiced at the resurrection of Jesus. We have gone through a season of, of Easter, uh, Ascension, and then Sunday past, May 31st, we celebrated the gift of God pouring out his Holy Spirit on all who put their trust in Jesus. Well, here's the question as we think about prayer for for our world and specifically North America. Can we look to the Holy Spirit to reverse the trend that we see happening in these days? Can he, the Holy Spirit, take a world which appears to be coming toxic to life to one where people find life in all its fullness? Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly, abundant living. To answer this question, we're going to look to three passages, Ezekiel 47, John 7, and Revelation 22, that we have to move fast. Ezekiel 47, it's a vision of the temple where the man of God sees uh, a trickle of water flowing uh, eastward from the south end of the temple. Uh, and he follows it with a kind of a yardstick or a measuring stick, and he goes a thousand cubits. And by now it is uh, ankle deep. Another thousand uh, cubits, it's knee deep. Another thousand cubits, it's waist deep. Another thousand cubits. And here's what it says. Again, he measured a thousand, and, and it was a river that I could not pass through. For the water had risen, it was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be passed through. That's Ezekiel 47, 5. Talking about flowing down through the desert all the way to the Dead Sea. Uh, the lowest place, incidentally, in the world, 1,300 feet below sea level, I believe, from a trickle at the temple to a mighty river flowing into the Dead Sea. Let's pick up the story in verse 6. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. As I went back, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba and enters the sea. Where the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be many fish. For this water goes there that the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea from Engede to Engleam. It will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. And on the banks, on both sides of the river, <clears throat> there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water from, from, for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. From death to an intox, through a toxic environment to incredible life. Here's the thing. The vision is about the Holy Spirit and about what Jesus came to bring. We know that by the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles, when Ezekiel 47 would have been very much on the minds of everyone in Jerusalem. It says in John 7, starting in verse 37, And on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, this he said about the Spirit 
whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So the Holy Spirit is that what Ezekiel 47 spoke about, the river flowing in and out of those who believe in Jesus to a world that desperately needs life, desperately needs Jesus. So yes, the Holy Spirit has actually been sent to bring life to an otherwise toxic dead place. Listen to the first three verses of the last chapter of Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will be, there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be on it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will no, need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Revelation 22, 1-5. This, friends, is where we're heading. Alleluia. Our job right now, therefore, is to pray, search the scriptures, pray, and give witness. Open our mouths and speak about Jesus so that the Holy Spirit can bring life to otherwise a wilderness. God bless you and thank you for your prayer and witness. <laughs>